those comedy bits one time for a women's meeting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you remember the movie Mrs. Doubtfire? Well, she made me Mrs. Faithfire. And, and uh, I had a wig on and everything, and I had to, and I was preaching to the women about how to treat men. And uh, they didn't even know it was a man. No, they did. They did. I'm sure. Come on. Come on. And uh, it was such a hit that people started offering me, you know, opportunities to come minister to their women's group. As, not as me, but as Mrs. Faithfire. And I went, something isn't right about this. You know? Cross-dressing for Jesus for a living. I don't know if I could do that. It was bad. It was bad. But it was good. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Just pray for me for a minute because um, the Lord has some good things for us. You know, you were visited here. We're so grateful that you came to be with us today. And uh, if you haven't been here for a while, we're so glad to see you. And there's always a home for you here. And, uh, and uh, you know, we'll try our best to love you. And so good to see this, this young lady here. Yeah, it's nice to see you today. Um, if you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. It's not in the notes. 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. So, you have a strength that you can draw from that the world does not have. You have a strength that the world doesn't even understand what it is. Okay, uh, look, look at this, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Isn't that good? Yeah. You have overcome the wicked one. The word of God abides in you, and you are strong. So, so good. So you're going to leave here just pumped up, built up, empowered, strengthened by the abiding word of God. Yeah. And you will overcome the wicked one, and you have overcome the wicked one. So good? You know, I remember when I was first born again, uh, I had some friends, they, they told me, they said, they said, Jesus is your crutch. He's, you know, your faith is your crutch. And I, and I thought about that for a long time, so I didn't quite know how to respond. You know, when people say stuff, you're not quite sure how to respond to it, and you're thinking, yeah, well, I, he's more than that. He's kind of my body cast. <laughs> If I didn't rely on Jesus, I don't think I'd have anything to rely on. I don't even know how I live. Matter of fact, I didn't live before before Jesus. Everybody relies on something. Yeah, it could be a bottle, could be drugs, could be could even be prescription drugs. Yeah. It could be all kinds of things people rely upon. Illicit sexual affairs, all kinds of crazy stuff people rely on for for their strength, right? To impress somebody or to Right? But as Christians, we have a source of strength that the world cannot see. To them, it seems like a weakness. But to you who know, your faith in Christ has made you strong. It's made you immovable, abounding, able to overcome, right? able to face the challenges of life because you know that you're not alone, and that you have the promises of the Lord. Okay, turn with me to Psalm 27, verse 1. And if you know anything about my notes, I don't always hit all the verses, and uh, uh, we, we kind of skim through stuff. But the verses, extra verses, are there for you to look up uh, and study on your own. And if you, and you can always have a copy of the notes and so forth. So Psalm 27. The Lord is the light, my light, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. You know, you have grace and you're equal to any challenge because of the Lord Jesus who strengthens you. You're equal to any challenge in life because Jesus is there to strengthen you. You can be obedient. 
You can be obedient and do what he asks you to do because you rely not on your own strength, but on his strength. Right? You can hold down a job because you rely on his strength. Yes. You can keep a family together because you rely on his strength. You can keep a marriage together because you rely on his strength. I, when I was up north, we lived in a beautiful area by Traverse City, and people would ask me to do weddings all the time, especially, you know, they do weekend little getaways over at um, Crystal Mountain, which was the number one resort area in Michigan. It was right in my backyard. I could actually see the, the lights of the mountain for where I live. And they would say, hey, preacher, can you marry me this weekend? We'll give you 500 bucks. We'll give you this. I said, uh, no, I, I can only do it if you get six weeks of premarital counseling. <laughs> well, what kind of preacher are you? I mean, we want to get married. And blah, blah, blah. We're going to pay you all this money. And I said, well, I'm a preacher that takes res my responsibility of you having a successful marriage very serious. That's right. You know, I mean, I'm just not a, a rent a rev you know? <laughs> I, really, I actually care about you, and I want to see you successful. Yeah. I said, this is your choice. You can get premarital counseling, or you can get counseling after you're married. And it's, the counseling after you're married is going to cost you a lot more than the premarital counseling, right? Right. And so, so my point was, I would say to him, I'd say, if you don't want Jesus involved in this, why are you getting married? Why do you want a preacher to do it? If you're not making a covenant before God, if this is just a contract between you and you somebody else. If, if Jesus isn't going to be the Lord of your life in this, why are you bringing him into this at all? Right, right. Why not just go to the Justice of the Peace? Why not just go to the county clerk's office and just get it done? Yeah. But, if Je but if Jesus is going to be involved in this and he's going to be Lord of this marriage, then let's get this thing on the right track. Because you can't do this on your own strength. You need the, you need the strength of the Lord to, to live and to live together and to have grace. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and attains favor from the Lord. Right. Well, that word favor is also grace. Yeah. So that means God has given you a special grace for that person. Yeah. To, to love this person and to be with this person and to build them up and to, and to do good, right? When you have children, God has given you a grace to raise those children. You can pull on that strength. You can pull on that grace. Right. The unmerited favor of the Lord is also an enabling power. It's a grace yes. to be able to do it. Paul says, I labored more abundantly than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God is within me. The favor of the Lord translated into energy, into power, into strength to be able to do something that I couldn't do in the natural. But now I can do it. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I remember when my first born, Bethany, when she was born, and uh, you know she was so tiny, and, and I held her, and they, they dipped her, her little feet in the ink, you know? And I, and I had to put the ink on my arm, and I was going like this, you know? And I had my little foot on my arm, and I was feeling so macho. And, uh, and I was so protective, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, leave, you know, the little nursery with you, so I was watching every nurse. What you doing now? What, what, what are you rubbing on her? What, what is it? I was just really overprotective, and then, and then when they when they asked us to to take the baby home, and I was carrying the baby, you know, you have the baby shower, and they give you those little carrier things, you know, so your first time using it, you're carrying this thing, and you're trying to get her into the car, and you put her into the car, and I kept thinking to myself, what idiots! They're letting me leave with this child. <laughs> They're actually trusting me with this little baby. Oh my God, I'm not in the hospital anymore. I gotta actually take care of this thing. I don't know what I'm doing. This is a terrible responsibility. How can you do this to me, people? And then I, I, I put her in the crib so she could sleep. And every half hour I'd wake up and look at her, shake her. I, she looked like she wasn't breathing, so I. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. After the third one, we just throw them in the crib and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, we, we need the grace of the Lord to help us. These challenges sometimes, I mean, 
It may not be a big deal to you now, you know, raising children or whatever, but that first child, that was a huge deal to me. That was a huge deal. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Psalm 40. Or excuse me, Isaiah chapter 40. And while we're going there, when I think of supernatural strength, you know, there's two there's two stories in the Bible of people that that tapped in to supernatural physical strength. Yeah. One was demonic, and the other one was by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. by the Spirit of God. The demoniac was filled with demons. And that said that they, he could break chains and no one could restrain him because he was so overpowering by demonic power, right? Yeah? So there are some people that tap into strength that's demonic. Yeah. I mean, say yuck. Yeah. Yuck. We don't, we don't want that strength. I've actually seen some martial arts demonstrations where I thought, that's demonic. Yeah. That's not. These, these people are not. It's not right. It's, not even, it's above physical law. Right. right. It's demonic. You know, I don't want any part of that stuff. Right? So, but there was one guy, Samson, who took a Nazarite vow, which is which is very uh, similar to your commitment to Christ. A Nazarite vow. When you when you, you consecrate yourself fully to Christ when you come to Jesus, right? Right? So the source of your strength is not seen in the natural. Right? He had he had long hair, he didn't cut his hair. Now, if it was obvious that he had this supernatural strength, I mean, he looked like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, and people would go, well, it's obvious, look at him, that, you know, that's, we know why he's strong. But why were they asking what the secret to his strength was? Because they couldn't figure out, this was obvious, it was so obviously above the natural, his physical strength. I, I don't know if he had whistle stick arms or not. I'm sure he had bigger arms than that. God probably had something to work with. Right? right? But it was still hidden. And they wanted to know the secret of his strength. What is your secret? What is your secret? What is your secret? I'm telling you, I can see that the Bible says in the last days, perilous times or stressful times will come. I foresee a day, and it's today, where... The stress of living is so strong that without the Nazarite vow that you have taken to, to make Jesus the Lord of your life, that people are going to see what is the source of your strength. Yeah. Right. What is the source of this? Come on. Right? You have been set apart. That's good. Right. You don't live by the natural anymore. You live by the power of God. The resurrection power of Jesus. Amen. He came to give life and to give it more abundantly. Yep. And we tap into that life. Yep. Right? Let me look at this. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my just claim is Passover from my God? And in other words, you know, what? You know, God has forgotten me. I'm, I'm just off on the side. I don't have power to do anything. And I'm just, everything is not fair. Verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Does anybody believe this? Are we all reading the same book? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! That's what Paul says. He says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Because then he taps into the power of God. Yes. Yeah. He says, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Wait on the Lord. 
It's a Hebrew word, quava, and it's waiting hopefully. But there's another aspect. There's a word picture that comes with it. No, waiting on the Lord is waiting hopefully for Him. Waiting in faith, right? But there's a word picture that goes with it. It's, it's binding together as in twisting. What that word picture is like is, is, is like if you take a, a, a thread by itself, you can snap it. But when you bind that thread and weave it around many strands of thread, it becomes a lot thicker, right? Thicker. So when, when, when you're waiting on the Lord, looking to Him hopefully, drawing your strength because of your trust in Him, having faith, living by faith, you're like a thread wrapping itself around an unbreakable cable. Right? You're not living by the strength of you anymore. You're wrapped around God's strength. Right. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Right. Yeah, yeah. And His strength is unsearchable. He never wearies. He never gets tired. He never has to take a nap. Right. Although I've encouraged other people to take a nap. <laughs> they needed their little nappy. They were a little grouchy. <laughs> But we are those who wrap our strength around the Lord. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Wait on the Lord. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of the ways that we wait on the Lord is we don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. Keep walking with Him. If you stumble, get back up. Get back up and, and, and go, go for it with Him. And, you know... Let me just give you this analogy about 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 growing in the Lord. When uh, when I first started playing a musical instrument, it was the drums. And when I started playing the drums, I would I would go to drum lessons and I would practice. And uh, uh, you know, people you know would would come over a period of time and listen to me play. And they said, "Wow, you've really improved." I goes, "I can't. I don't think I've improved at all." I said, "No." You know, because the increments were so small for my eyes that I couldn't see the improvement. But over time, people would come and see the improvement, right? Right. This is the same with you in your growth with, with in Christ. You're not who you were, or at least you should be who you were several years ago. Right. You should be growing. You should be changed. You should not be the same person. People should physically be able to see the growth in your character, the growth in your spirit, the strength of your of your integrity, the strength of your ability to be able to hold up under immense pressure. We should be stronger. They should be able to see it. Joseph, his his overlord, who was the captain of Pharaoh's guard, had him as a slave, and he could see the blessing of the Lord on him. He told him that. He goes, wow, everything you, you touch turns to gold. I mean, I can see the blessing of the Lord on you. I can see it. I'm, therefore, I'm going to promote you. I'm going to make you this, make you that. He had no problem seeing that Joseph was tapping into something that was beyond Joseph. Right. And it, got, it gave glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There, there was a, this, this preacher friend of mine. I was at this church, my first church. It was called Amazing Grace. World Outreach Center. Everything back then was World Outreach Center. Now, now the hip, hipster thing is to have the one word, you know, compel, uh, ignite, uh, journey, impact. That's that's the hipster that's the hipster church titles. They're all faddish. Church titles come and go the way that people name their churches. <laughs> Anybody remember the Tabernacle phase? So and so Tabernacle. So and so Tabernacle. Yeah. So, um, anyways, I was at this church, Amazing Grace World Outreach Center. <laughs> And this pastor friend of mine, he goes, he goes, he goes, it was my first time on a worship team. I just got saved. You know, I come out of the bars, you know, and, and he says, he says, you're going to do a drum solo today. I says, a drum solo? How am I going to do that? Because back then the worship was, uh, we bring the sacrifice of praise. <laughs> do the, do the, do the, and I said, what do you mean? He goes, no, I'm going to. The power of God's going to come on you. God told me in prayer, I'm going to read the song. When I get to the part about the clashing symbols, I'm going to point to you, and you're going to do a drum solo in the spirit. 
And I went, oh no, this, this is not going to be good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what he's thinking. I don't even know what's going on. And, and I said, I, but you know what? I agreed to it because I, we live by faith, yeah. right? We live by faith. Yes. Do things by faith. <laughs> so I went, oh no, you know. So he, he gets there, the worship's going, the worship, and he's there. He, okay, pastor stands up there. Psalm 149, he says, praise him with this, praise him, and praise him with the loud sounding cymbals. He goes, go! More than that. And I, I just said, I don't know what to do. So I, I just started playing. And you know what? The power of God came on. I, there's no way I could ever mimic that drum solo again. I wish they had it on, on, on some kind of recording or something, you know? Yeah. It was probably a good thing because I'd be bragging about it forever. Because it was, it was actually the spirit of the Lord, you know? And I went, I'm going for it. And people are yelling, they're standing up, they're jumping up and down. A freedom came into that place. And it was by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. I was at a prayer meeting, and there was about this many people at the prayer meeting. This was a good sized prayer meeting. I mean, people attended this prayer meeting. And and they had the music going, and and uh, and they had things up there they were continually praying for, but the, but this little long the music's going. And this 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 music, and it's kind of rocking. This music comes up, and I'm up front, and the Lord says, Would you dance for me? And I went, No. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Lord, you don't have never seen me dance. I mean, my wife, she was the prima ballerina. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I look like a, I don't know, a, a bull in the china shop. I'm not going to, this is not going to be good. You want me to dance? He said, he says, no, I'm asking you, would you do it for me? And I'm thinking, well, I don't even know what to, how to start. I mean, I, I'm not a dancer. I mean, I see people even dance in the spirit. You know, we used to mock them. We used to call it the Pentecostal two-step. <laughs> you guys are too young to remember that. Didn't remember the Pentecostal two-step? <laughs> or maybe you weren't raised in the Pentecostal church or been it years ago. I can do that, the yeah. Pentecostal two-step. You know, that's not too hard. And, and now, now in the youth services, when you go to to, to the, the hipsters, you know, the young kids, they just jump. <laughs> it's just an up and down jump thing. You can see them. You're like, oh, that's cool. You just want to stage dive into the, <laughs> into the midst of them. But uh, <laughs> is anybody here today? I'm, I'm trying to just kind of relax and have a good time. And you're looking, it's too early for this. <laughs> Now, uh, so so he says, "Will you dance?" I says, "Sure." So so I finally agreed to do it. But I, everybody was behind me, so I you know, I didn't know if anybody would see me or not. But I'm sure I was so obnoxious they hadn't seen me. So I just started doing this dance. I started going for it, and it was like this warrior dance. I can't. There's no way I could ever reenact this dance again because the spirit of the Lord came on, right? And then. I got done because I was starting to get tired after about five minutes. <laughs> Picked a dad, bad day to quit smoking. No, I, don't, I don't smoke. I, I got tired after five minutes and I had to quit. So I stopped. <laughs> and the Lord said, now turn around. I turned around and the whole place was going nuts. Everybody was dancing. I mean, everything was just going nuts. And this person came up to me and they said, they said, man, the spirit of God that was emanating off of you when you did that dance, what happened? You've never danced, you never danced or anything like that. What happened? God told me to do it. And I did it. And some freedom came into the meeting. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? Wow. What if God told you to get a job at a certain place? What if God told you to do this or do that? We don't live by our own strength anymore. Yeah. We don't do things. We may have natural abilities, but God is able to exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond yeah. even our natural abilities. Right. Amen. Woo! Yeah. How did how, how did Samson do that? One time he, he pulled a whole gate, a brass gate, right out of the ground, put it on his shoulders, and ran up a hill. <laughs> wow. You're like, why? Because <laughs> because it was closed and he wanted to go out. <laughs> that was it. I mean, man, he he, he would he'd take, he'd just you know break these bonds of, of rope, just like they were flax, and said, I don't I don't know what flax is, but you know, then they would take you took a jawbone of a of a donkey, 
and slayed a thousand men with a jawbone of a donkey single-handedly. I mean, a martial arts movie has nothing on this. This is amazing stuff. And, and you go, oh, that's a Jewish legend or myth. No, that's the Bible, folks. Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Well, then you you have to believe the miracles of the Bible. Right? Because we we serve a supernatural God, a miracle God, a God that can do miracles for you and I. Amen. We have to magnify the Lord. Come magnify the Lord. Make Him bigger. Make Him bigger than, than, than your lack. Make Him bigger than your challenge. Make Him bigger to the health, than the health problems. Make Him bigger because we don't live by the natural anymore. We're new creations in Christ Jesus. We're something the world has never seen before. We're a new species. And I'm not talking about X-Men. I'm talking about a new species in the spirit. We're, you know, you'd be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable will of God. You are equal to any challenge by the strength of the Lord in you. Because He is your strength. He is your strength. He is your strength. He is your strength. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin was dying. He was a teenager. And he, was, he was dying. He had terminal heart problems, disease. And, and people would, would tell him, you need to come to grips with your death, son. You know, you're right with Jesus. Let's make sure you're right with the Lord. Go home and be with the Lord. And he said, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like I should just accept my death. And so, Mark chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. It said, therefore, if you believed, you've received. Whoever shall say this, not that's the 20. The one, but after that, therefore, if you believe, you receive, you shall have anything you ask for. And so he, he said, well, I, I'm going to just believe that I've received my healing. Now, how many know that that's nuts in the natural? Yeah, yeah. Completely nuts. And he thought, well, what would I do if I was healed? Because I believe in that I receive. I'm going to get out of this bed. I'm going to get a job. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. That is his testimony, and it's true. So he got out of bed, and his muscles were emaciated from being in bed in you know, all those years. And he's sore the next day from walking around. But he gets a job at a landscaping place. And he goes to work. And every day before work, he would say, The Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. And he would go and do that job. And he would outwork everyone. Praise you, the other employees were saying, Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. You need to pace yourself because we don't want to work that hard. You're making a bad. This is not good for us that you're working so hard. Right? And he ended up being completely healed. Right? Because he, the Lord is the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. He tapped into something beyond the natural. Yeah, come on. By faith, he tapped into the supernatural power of God, the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. The resurrection life of Jesus Christ. It's, it's, it is there for you to live righteous and to, and to overcome sin. But it is so much more. It's for you to live. To live. To live with the joy of the Lord. To live life. To enjoy, yes. to live by the strength of the Lord, yes. to overcome the tragedies of the past, yes. drawing from the strength of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, am I preaching anybody happy today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to. I want to go to Luke chapter twenty-two, point number four. We're going to skip point number three. I told you I do this sometimes, but I always put more notes than what I usually use because I like to tell stories. Luke 22, verse 43. Luke 22, verse 43. <clears throat> now, in verse 42, Jesus was praying. He said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So apparently... God wanted Jesus to do something that he didn't really want to do. 
and was hard. Right? And he was going to, you know, we used to have a t-shirt. It, it had, we, it was called the Lord's Gym. Remember those t-shirts? And, and Jesus is all, he's all buff, you know, he's bench pressing the cross. And it says, bench press this, the sins of the whole world. <laughs> the Lord's Gym. You, know, you guys remember that t-shirt? It's very cool. So, you know, how many of you know that he tapped into something? The power of the Lord. He emptied himself. He was a he was a man. He got hungry, he got thirsty, he got tired. Right? But he lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. He didn't do he didn't do miracles just out of his divinity. He did them as a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. Right? So so as he is, so are we in this world. We are now anointed by the Holy Spirit to carry out the works of Christ as He did. Because He did that. Because He did that? So, look at the in verse 43. Then an angel appeared to Him from heaven, strengthening Him. Wow. An angel came. Now, if He was doing it in the strength of His divinity, what would He need an angel for? Okay, let's go back to look at look at this one. Um, Mark one, verse twelve. Mark chapter one, verse twelve. Immediately the spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast. And angels ministered to him. Well, at the end. It, it, it confirms that in Matthew's Gospel says angels came and ministered to him. Are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will be heirs of salvation? It says in Hebrews, his ministers are his ministers are fire, but his angels are are flood, or his, his angels are are spirits, and his, yeah. which is wind, and his ministers are flaming fire. So what does wind do when it hits the fire? It just surges it right up. So. If Jesus needed ministering angels to give him strength, right. do you think you and I might need ministering yeah. angels at different times? Mm -hmm. Do you think the Lord would not send ministering angels every once in a while, unseen ministering angels to minister to you at different times? Mm -hmm. You might not even know it. There might have been times where you were really weak and down, and then all of a sudden, an yeah. angel from heaven, from the presence of the Lord, came down to you and put his hand on your back strength from that angel came into you. Yeah. And you don't even know. Right? You don't have to see them to know yeah. that they do that. Doesn't the Bible say that they're ministering spirits sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Yeah. Are we reading the same book? Yeah. So they are. They're ministering to you, right? There could be angels here right now. Ministering to you. Speaking to you. Helping you. Strengthening you. You know, the big three are obvious sources of strength. We get strength from the Word. We get strength from praying through, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. But there's all, and, and we get we get strength from community. You know, get together, encourage one another. But these things are not obvious. The fact that we got to remind ourselves that there's, we live by the supernatural, not by the natural. And that there's a strength that God wants to give you even today. And I also believe that the Word of God carries with it the enabling power, the impartation for you to walk it out. So even as I'm speaking, the Word of God, I always have this faith, not in me, but in the Bible, in the Word of God, that the Word of God going forth is imparting strength to you. It's feeding your faith. It's encouraging you. It's lifting you up. It's building you up. Yeah. That we leave here changed by the word of the Lord. Right? Yeah. Right? Okay, church, stand up. We're going we're gonna to close, but I want, you, I want us to stand up because we're going to pray together here. Okay, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> does, does everybody remember that we're a Pentecostal church? Yeah. Yeah. 
one of our 16 fundamental truths, which is our Pentecostal distinctives of what we believe, it's what every member of the church believes, is that there is a baptism in the Holy Spirit. And with that baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, there's, there's a physical evidence of speaking in tongues, which is prayer language, and praying in the Holy Ghost. So when a person is baptized with the Holy Spirit, they, be, they can utilize in a, a prayer language. And it's not just when the Spirit of God comes on. According to Paul, he said, I will pray in the Spirit. I will pray in my understanding. So it is an act of your will. Jude 20 says, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. So I just want you to know that when you pray in the Spirit, you're building up your most holy faith. You're tapping into the supernatural strength of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says you're edifying yourself. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself. That means you're, you're building a capacity for more of God. You're building something within you. You're expanding something within you. You need to know this because we do things by faith based on what God's Word says. I tithe by faith because God's Word says tells me to tithe. I believe that Jesus died for my sins because the Lord says that you must believe this to be saved and that all who call upon the Lord will be saved. I believe that when I pray in tongues that the power of God encourages me that I'm built up on the inside because the Word of God says it. Will I ever figure it out with my brain? Probably not. But God was smarter than me and He says, I'm going to go past your brain and I'm going to speak to your spirit and I'm going to tell you to pray in the Holy Ghost. Only those who humble themselves under the mighty hand of God will receive this refreshing from the Lord. Because it bypasses your pride. By praying in the Holy Ghost. Singing in the Holy Ghost. Which is singing in tongues. I will sing with my spirit. And I will sing with my understanding. Therefore, singing with your spirit is singing in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! If it was good enough for the Apostle Paul, if he needed tongues, how much more do we need tongues? I thank God every day that I can pray in tongues. There are times I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so heavy. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this today. And I'll start praying in the Holy Ghost. I'll pray in the Holy Ghost and I'll thank God that I can pray in the Holy Ghost. And I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the strength of the Lord building me up on the inside. The devil would like nothing better than to keep that doctrine hidden from you. To keep you from getting the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because it's the power of God. It's the power of God to be a witness for Him. It's something you can tap into. Oh man, I used to work this job. I hated this job. And I'd get so grieved and I'd just start praying in the Holy Ghost underneath my brother. What are you doing? You're mumbling. It's none of your business. And then I worked this other job. I was a cook. And every time I'd go into the freezer to get stuff, I'd yell out in tongues, Hey, she got out my sake, hey, 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 and I'd come out of the freezer. <laughs> Nobody knew what was going on, but I could pray in tongues any time I wanted to. Nobody's going to tell me not to pray in tongues. I remember this guy, he tried to talk the baptism and the Holy Spirit out of me. That's not for today, and blah, 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 and the Holy Spirit, and that's salvation. Blah, blah. I said, You're not going to talk the Holy Spirit out of me, brother. You're, you're just not going to do it. I know what I've received. And I know what happened to me when the Holy Spirit came upon me. And out of my bellies came rivers of living water. And I began to speak in a heavenly language that was not me making it up anymore. No one is going to tell me that I didn't receive that. And I can tap into it any time that I want. Praise the Lord. And so can you. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Not what I just want to believe in. Not what makes me comfortable. But the whole I'm not 
to some people, not to other people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going to have an altar call because there's some people that need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to yell at you when you're up here. I got my love my system now. Okay, it's all good. But you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to get saved. You need to get baptized with the Holy Ghost. You need the power of God. You need the power of God. And if you haven't been able to speak in tongues for a long time, we want to pray for you too because I believe that that well spring can be loosened and the Lord can just spring up that well that's within you. And you can you can again feel free of you know, what has been buried, what has been smothered, what, it, what has been filled in will be free. We're going we're to close with this, but... I want you to, 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 to not be ashamed and come up and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning, but we're going we're gonna to close. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you're so good to us. You're so good to your church. Thank you, Lord, for the strength of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we don't live by the natural, but we live by the Spirit of God. Fill us up. Fill your church up today, Lord. Fill them up today, Father. Encourage them, Lord. Encourage your people, Father. Fill them up even today, Lord. Fill them up even today, Father. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Okay, God bless you. You need to come out.